Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration and the incredible leaders who are taking us there. Here's your host, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining me today for Your Space Journey. Today, my special guest is Christian Pitoro, the CEO of Pacific, a broadband satellite operator. I was fortunate to meet Christian at the launch of Pacific One aboard a SpaceX Falcon rocket on December 16th, 2019. Pacific One is a next generation geostationary satellite that will stream high speed, low cost, ultra reliable broadband to rural and suburban areas of the Pacific and Southeast Asia. Pacific One will connect previously unserved or underserved populations with affordable, high-speed broadband for healthcare, education, government services, businesses, and disaster relief. Its services will stimulate economic growth and provide greater access to the internet. Now, before we get to my interview with Christian, let's go to our segment called Your Space Journey. This is when viewers and listeners like you call in to tell us how their space journey began and what they're most excited about for the future of space exploration. And today for this segment, it's my privilege to introduce Dean Regis, the astronomer for one of my favorite observatories, the Cincinnati Observatory Center. Hi, my name is Dean Regis. I'm the astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory, also the co-host of the podcast Looking Up. Well, my space journey began uh, in 1998, where I was working part-time jobs various places, and I got uh, hired at the uh, uh, for the Cincinnati Parks to do a nature ed, and one of the parks had a planetarium in it, and I show up to work, and they say, hey, Dean, gr- glad to have you. Uh, there's the planetarium. You're running it. So that was my introduction. I had to, uh, was forced into it very quickly, and I knew nothing about the stars or the planets. I didn't even know where the North Star was. And I had to learn very quickly. And uh, in that planetarium, I just fell in love with the subject. When they put the stars on the ceiling, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And uh, it turned into a career. And 22 years later, here I am, uh, super excited to, that the stars have changed my life. Well, what I'm most looking forward to in the future of space exploration, or, well, it's hard to pick just one thing, but I'm really partial to the Europa orbiter and going back to Europa, sending an unmanned mission out to the this moon of Jupiter with uh, this cracked surface of ice and looking under the ice to see if the, how much water and liquid water there is on Europa. That's my number one. I guess if I had to go number two, I would be saying, let's go on to Mars. Let's send some crazy people that want to go on this two-year journey to Mars and back. I'm not volunteering, but boy, I wouldn't mind watching from the sidelines. Your Space Journey. Thanks so much for sharing your story, Dean. If you'd like to share your story with us, we'd love to hear it. Just leave us a voicemail by calling 317-862-4700, or you can email us an audio or video clip. Just send that email to info at yourspacejourney.com. Now to today's interview with Christian. Again, Christian Paturo is the founder and CEO of the Pacific Broadband Satellite Group. Christian has over two decades experience in the satellite industry. Prior to founding Pacific in 2013, he developed satellite offerings for new markets in Asia Pacific as head of special projects for MIASAT. Before that, he was the executive vice president and chief development officer at O3B Networks, where his work contributed to raise $1.2 billion. He developed a global pricing and demand model and initiated the company's cruise line broadband service. Your Space Journey. Christian, thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. You're welcome, Chuck. Pacific is your brainchild. Uh, You helped found it in 2013. I was just wondering for our audience, can you tell us a little bit more about the background behind Pacific? Yeah. um, Well, I guess, you know, I've... before I started Pacific, I had had a career of about 20 years in, in the satellite industry. Yeah. And um, throughout my career, I realized that there's a lot of um, kind of shortcomings um, in the industry, a lot of places that the, the, the industry doesn't cover and that is in high needs for satellite connectivity. Um, and that is in particular in, in rural and remote areas of, of uh, Asia and, and the Pacific Islands. Um, so at, at the same time, I felt like broadband, uh, satellite broadband was not really um, 
coming to Asia as it is in, in North America and Europe, even in Africa, South America, but in Asia and Pacific, um, you know, the, the I guess the prevailing uh, offering was still broadcast via satellite and uh, broadband was not really there. So I decided to, st to start it, to, uh, to, you know, design a satellite that would offer access, low cost, and a high speed per point of presence to remote and rural areas that were in high need for that. And uh, that, that's how it started. And it, 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 it seemed to be the right thing to do because it snowballed to a point that, you know, we managed to launch the satellite on 16th of December. <laughs> See, I think that's incredible. And, and I, I was there with you and it was incredible. And I just couldn't imagine what was going through your mind. Here it is, all this effort, your effort, your team. What was it like to finally see Pacific One launch just over two weeks ago? <laughs> it was really surreal. Um, I, I just couldn't really believe what I was seeing. It, it was, um, you know, it, it was, of course, the culmination of a lot of work, uh, but it was still a lot of stress until the last moments. All the things that happened, um, you know, a lot of phone calls until the last minute, making sure everything was aligned. We had 160 guests out there in in Cape Canaveral. We had wow. 60 guests watching it uh, in at our office in Singapore. So that added to the stress, I can tell you. <laughs> and uh, it was, you know, the moment it, it went off, it was like, you know, I don't know, like a 200 pound weight that just got off my shoulders wow. and fell off. And, and I felt literally, I really felt lighter because <laughs> wow. I just saw it go off and, and that was it. And there was a lot of those worries that all of a sudden disappeared. And it was just the next step to take. Well, congratulations to you and your team on that. Can I ask, how is the satellite doing right now? Oh, it's doing very well. It it, uh, it has entered the um, the normal mode uh, on the, at its its final location at 150 degree east. It's um, it, it's fully deployed and uh, it's starting to being tested right now. So uh, great. I was wondering, can you tell us just a little bit more about the specific mission objectives of Pacific One? The objective is is to connect the. I mean, I like I just said, to connect the rural and remote areas of, of uh, Asia and and the Pacific. Um, I would say that the objective, further objective, is is to connect to, to fill the fundamental gap in um, in connectivity, the digital divide that leads to a lot of suffering in remote and rural communities. In, in Asia and the Pacific. And that is connecting, for instance, uh, school, uh, police stations, post offices, but also uh, health clinics, uh, dispensaries that often see a, a lot of, um, you know, human dramas without connectivity. We've actually tested that. We've tested the, um, um, you know, the, 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 the the value proposition of connecting clinics like that, mm -hmm. uh, using KU band systems for the last three years, waiting for Pacific One to be built, and I can tell you, we've already saved uh, you know about thirty or forty lives uh, throughout the different uh, uh, clinics that we've connected. So I can only really? imagine the, the value that Pacific One will bring. Oh, that's fantastic! And when can I? I guess when will it actually be online? Like when will that first customer be able to connect? So we will start bringing customers online uh, on the 23rd of, of January, as it stands today. So as I told you, the satellite is now on station and, and fully deployed, waiting for its final in-orbit testing. Um, so we, we have our ground stations that are ready to go. We're just waiting for the final testing, and then we start slowly bring the, all the 56 beams online. Um, so I'm, I'm, as, as it is now, we, we are targeting 1st of February for commercial service, which is, which is a very, very short time, if you imagine, between the launch and the start of service. It would be only a month and a half. Absolutely. Yeah, I was impressed. I was expecting a much longer timeline. So that's very impressive. Um, one thing you mentioned to the press conference, I just wonder if you could share it again, is just the download speeds. What kind of download speeds roughly uh, could the customers expect? Well, it really depends on on the size of the terminal that you're using. So, you know, we we, we could uh, 
we could go up to one gigabit per second on trunking on 4.5 meter terminal, but that is not really the uh, the standard equipment that we're proposing. Although some customers have taken that option, the, the standard equipment is more like the 1.2 meter, the small terminals to deploy in those remote communities. And on that, we are offering something around uh, between 100 and 150 megabit per second. So wow. it's really... Uh, Good, good amount of, of, of downloads, something that you could expect from uh, cable internet. Absolutely, which is impressive. Now, one thing too, um, at the uh, press conference, you mentioned the benefits of using the geosynchronous um, orbit of the satellite as opposed to the low Earth orbit um, satellites uh, trying to offer the same thing. Can you tell us a little bit more just about the benefits of the geosynchronous? Yeah, so, you know, the geosynchronous is, um, I guess I see it as twofold, really. The one is very straightforward. The, 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 the terminals on the ground don't move. They, they stay fixed. They, um, um, you know, they're always pointing at the same location. And, and because of that, they're a lot cheaper. Right. You know, the, the cheapest terminal that we we could offer is is below five hundred dollar, even you know potentially below four hundred dollar. Mm -hmm. um, so that that is just you know um, off the table for for uh, Leo or, or Mio constellation because you you need uh, dual terminals, you need phased array, so that's that's um, a lot more expensive. Right. And the second thing, the second advantage is, is actually that you have a very consistent service because you're always pointing at the same points uh, in space. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you are uh, once you install the system, you you make sure that you have a good line of sight. But with Leo or Mio constellation, because especially Leo's, um, you always have satellite coming from different direction that uh, you know kind of hand over their service. So you need kind of a cone of line of sight that makes it a lot harder to make sure that you have a consistent service. And in fact, what you'll have in the end is some a service that is similar to what you have in GPS in you know high rise cities. Well, sometimes you have signals, sometimes you have poor signals, sometimes you have no signal, and there you are. You are stationary, you know, at the same location, receiving that at your home, and you wonder why you have such a variable service. Mm -hmm. um, some people have called it uh, Earth fade in the past ah. because you know it's, it's actually a, a blockage from from uh, this line of sight. Yeah, Christian, let me ask you this. Have you uh, always looked up to space? What, what sparked your interest in space in the first place? I, actually, I, I have a master in tubal machinery. So what's, what my, my, my first interest was in engines and, and propulsion. That's really where I come from. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, slowly, I guess I made my way through um, from propulsion. I, I was hired at SES um, and started developing a, an interest in attitude control, data processing. So I'm really, I don't have originally a telecom background, mm -hmm. but then slowly then I developed a taste for business developments that made me really take an interest in the telecom side of the business and and then developed an interest in, in, in broadband. So no, I, I, I guess at first I was more an aeronautics engineer, propulsion engineer, and you know, it's just uh, slowly I, I I took an interest in space. So no, I, I didn't I didn't dream of space when I was a kid. I was more dreaming of engines and and machines that made a lot of noise and smoke. So <laughs> well, that makes sense. <laughs> and, and and look where you are now, which is incredible. One last question, <laughs> if I may. Um, I know obviously we're working against Pacific One um, in action for your customers. What's next for Pacific? Is there a Pacific Two in the works? What's next? Well, yes, I, I guess the company realizes that, you know, the, where we've gotten with Pacific One is, of course, with a lot of work, a lot of a little bit of luck, but also doing what is what is really obvious that the, the, the obvious thing is that there is a market for that kind of offering. Um, you don't raise that kind of money that we've raised. Uh, you don't you don't get all these customers signing for this kind of bandwidth just by chance. There is a real market behind that, uh, and it's not limited to Asia Pacific. The market is global. Uh, you just have to identify those pockets of demands 
uh, in rural and remote areas in developing part of the world. And these developing countries are, you know, scattered around the world. So definitely we are working already on Pacific 2. We have blueprints for Pacific 2. Most likely it will be a satellite that will augment the capacity of Pacific 1, but also starts, you know, encroaching into larger territories. Wonderful. Well, Christian, again, I just want to congratulate you and your team for this wonderful success. I want to wish you the, the best of luck in the future. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really do appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Chuck. Have a nice day. Your space journey. Wow, I really enjoyed my conversation today with Christian. Hope you did too. If you'd like to find out more about Pacific, just go to their website at Pacific.com. That's K-A-C-I-F-I-C.com. I want to thank Christian for joining us today. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today as well. We really do appreciate it. If you liked the episode today, we'd love it if you'd give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or give us a like if you're watching on YouTube or whatever podcast application you're listening to us. We'd also appreciate it if you'd share this episode with a friend. Again, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time. God bless.